I grew up in Palo Alto, went to El Carmelo, uh, Jordan, and Pali. I graduated from Berkeley and Stanford and went on to work in high tech for a little over 20 years. Uh, took some time off after that and then became, uh, decided once my daughter started public school, uh, decided to um, go back to work and decided to become a realtor and have been doing that for the last uh, five years. Mm. With our Realtors Association, I've been chair of the Local Government Relations Committee for several years. I've also been a member of the Silvar Political Action Committee. So, uh, the reason why I chose to run is I felt that um, first the council needed a, a diversity of voices in uh, the issues that it's looking at. And a second reason why I'm running is I like to see the council also focus more on issues that affect the day-to-day -day quality of life that the residents face. Uh, the key issues that I think um, that the council needs to focus on are um, f really four issues. One is um, housing density. They need to look hard at the effects of school overcrowding, traffic congestion, and overutilization of city infrastructure and services before they decide to increase uh, housing density. The second issue that I think that's really important for the city to look at is the economic health of the city. Uh, we've all seen, um, those of us who live close to downtown, um, many storefronts become vacant. So one of the things that I feel will not, will discourage um, businesses to come to town is the business license tax, so I'm opposed to that. Approximately 75 to 80 percent of that is going to be paid by small community serving businesses. People like accountants, dentists, lawyers, retail businesses that serve the community. And only 10 percent of it is going to be paid by the larger corporations who are in town. Those like in Stanford Industrial Park or over on East Meadow Circle. And so it's, it's kind of an unfair balance, especially when you consider based on employee count, the um, demographics would probably indicate that there's a larger demographics associated with the larger companies. And the, the, third, the, the third issue that I think is important is the city budget. Um, we are facing deficits. We, we, we need to figure out how to get to a sustainable budget. And the first step really to doing that is achieving more transparency to the budget so we can understand what each of the different services that the city provides uh, is costing to deliver that service. Not necessarily to cut the service, but it could be they uh, decide to either have a higher fee structure to the service to recover the costs. They could decide they need to subsidize the service more because it's in the public's interest to subsidize that service or expand that service more. Or they could even look at um, some pro sort of private, public-private partnership to deliver that service. And then the last issue really is the high-speed rail. Um, I believe the city needs to take a pretty active stand on the high-speed rail. Um, I know that the council endorsed that last November on an 8-0 to zero vote, uh, which was um, kind of unfortunate because um, based on the information that I, I saw, um, with the need for grade separation, um, it was clear that there would either be a, a pretty tall wall or some sort of um, trenching that would be needed for that rail project. Um, and for a couple reasons I, I oppose that. Um, one is um, having that wall run through the community is only going to serve to divide the community. And the second for the uh, $40 billion estimated cost of the rail, um, it's solving just one small piece of our transportation issues. And um, the larger part of the transportation issues that we face in our city is really involved local commuting. You oppose uh, any high-speed rail? Um, not any, but on that specific route, as well as um, <clears throat> it just in a broader context, uh, funding it to the degree that we are with both state as well as local bond issues. The tunneling option, it, it sounds like a really good option if it was financially feasible. But um, from what various people have told me in terms of the cost estimates, um, unless uh, there's some funding from the federal or state level, 
it would be prohibitive for um, Palo Alto property owners to uh, fund that on their own. Um, when you look at the council, what do you see as lacking? What's not represented on the city council that you think? Um, I, it, for the past few years, I've seen the council focus on a lot of um, broader, more regional issues, such as climate change and things like that. Um, and not necessarily on the day-to-day -day life issues that affect people like uh, local traffic congestion issues. You're not saying that it's not diverse in the sense that it's got um, too many people from one <coughs> part of town or too pe many people that are... Well, well, well there's that and then um, uh, when the endorsement for the high-speed rail came up, um, I, it was October or November, mm -hmm. It was done on an eight to zero vote. Mm -hmm. Now there were speakers who had some opposing viewpoints, and I think yes. if you would listen to the residents, I think there would have been some opposition votes. Right. So, so taking the Edgewood Plaza, um, I don't think there's anybody in that neighborhood that says, "Gee, we really need here are more housing units." But the property owner is saying, "You know, if you want these other things, I need to be able to build this much housing." Sure. For me, it it goes back to. Uh, how much additional stress is that housing going to cause mm -hmm. uh, on the schools, the traffic, and, and city services? And if, if it's not significantly mitigated, I would vote against it. So would you have opposed the Alma Plaza <coughs> um, project because of the residential in it? Yes. Would you favor something of a business tax if you could change it in some way? Uh, I would favor it if it could be restructured in a certain fashion and if we if the funds if I knew that the funds were going to um, something of lasting value mm -hmm. to the city uh, so, like a public safety building uh, my suggestion was to base it on employee count no cap have um, uh, exemptions for people who live in Palo Alto and work in Palo Alto. Um, some larger corporation, if they had somebody who worked in Palo Alto, they should get some exemption because it is, it is helping the environment. And if they were to um, either fund or ho however many employees um, were using monthly passes to use Caltrains or other public transportation, they should get some credit against their tax as well. The city has, has taken a relatively hard line in negotiating with the um, with the service union employees. Um, I wonder if you could explain what your views are on the cost of the current cost of benefits and compensation for city employees. Either look at how, how the function can be done uh, in a different fashion, right. either through technology, through outsourcing, or by combining job functions, through changing work rules. Yeah. Uh, it's to look at how they can do things differently so that they can achieve the same set of uh, results with less people. It's, it's, hap it's a general trend that's right. been happening. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you think Palo Alto should do with this compost? <laughs> <laughs> Environmentally, it just doesn't make sense to me to be shipping it way off site. It, it's really either figuring out is there multiple sites that you can kind of create to do that or perhaps find some location that's closer but um, than Sunnyvale. Based on what you see is available right now of the options, uh, and there aren't many, but like the, the chunk of airport that somebody brought up uh, on a plan, does that seem like a suitable site or? It's, it's an option to consider. Or have you seen any other sites that could be considered for this type of business? It's an option that, that should be considered, but I don't think that the airport people had an adequate chance yet to express what their um, viewpoints are, and I, I'd like to see them express their viewpoints. You know, I, I realize I'm a newcomer, um, but um, being new also means you can inject some, some different perspectives, which hopefully can lead to better decisions that the council makes.